What's the deal, everybody? It's Kyle McGuire from United Soft Wash representing Garner, North Carolina. And today, we're going to make a quick how-to video on how to clean a roof like a pro. If that's something you're interested in, pay attention because I'm about to learn you something. I'll get with you. What's going on, everybody? Right now, I'm at this beautiful property. As you can see it behind me absolutely gorgeous house we just got done with the uh house wash which is good because right now we're about to tackle the roof and a lot of people are curious how do you clean a roof so uh, i'm going to try to give you guys a brief overview today as to what to do some of the procedures you need to follow that way you set yourself up for success uh, one of the benefits to already doing the house wash is i've sprayed a ton of water i've i've already uh cleaned out the gutters too so why do we clean out the gutters if they're not already clean? Well, it's important because you want to make sure that they're operating as designed. It doesn't do you any good if you're spraying down the roof and uh, that water's running down the shingles, just hitting a bunch of obstructions and dirt and leaves, and it's just rolling off the side of the house. The gutters are there so they could direct water flow. Uh, we want them to work correctly. That way we can control where this contaminants go. And when I say contaminants, I mean our proprietary algicide, our cleaning agent that we're using. For the roof we want to know where it's going that way we can properly saturate it or capture it um, all the gutters on this house and there are a ton they've already been cleaned out i spent a good two hours cleaning them out when i first got here i flushed all the downspouts i know that everything's working correctly um, once you do that what you need to do is do a walk around of the property you really want to understand where the vegetation is some houses have more plants than others we lucked out on this one, all right? So you have the mulch beds here, completely empty for this one tree right there. And that one, he's gonna be a little resilient. So uh, he, he's, he's nothing weak. So we don't really have nothing to worry about there. But something that we do wanna be cognizant about is this really nice grass. You can see how bright green it is. You can look at this downspout right here. And it, it's just stubbed up at the bottom of the house. Uh, he doesn't have it really going away. But all we can do is saturate the ground. You know, we're gonna saturate the ground as good as we can. That way we can control uh, if anything gets damaged. You know, the more saturated the plants are and the ground are, the less likely, likely it's gonna be that you kill some plants. As you can see from the roof, there's all types of peaks on this. So some of the roof washing I'm gonna do from the ladder. All right, and some of it I'm gonna get on just for the sake of making some content. I'm gonna get on the ladder and I'm gonna, or I'm gonna get off the ladder on the roof and I'm gonna stand up there and do some spraying. This is a good access point right here for me. You can see I already got the ladder up and it's on a, it's on a low pitch of the roof. You know, it's gonna be safe for me to get up there and hit, hit a lot of these sides on the back of the house. Now, if it were the other side of the house where my truck's parked, really steep, uh, really steep roof and it's hard to get up there and walk around. So we're gonna be spraying from the ladder whenever it comes down to this. This is actually the north side of the house. Everything's squeaky clean. We just did a house wash. But if you look up here, got a bunch of Glio Capsa Magma. It's the black, black streaks. It's the uh, organic growth that is attacking the lime and the shingles. So we're gonna kill that stuff. We're gonna kill it that way it can release from the shingle and the next time there's a rain comes it's going to wash away all that organic growth that's on the uh on the shingles so one little obstacle we have is we have a paint crew right here in the garage so we're going to be cognizant of the paint crew whenever they're in there and we're going to be careful where we're spraying because sodium hypochlorite is a corrosive chemical we don't want to go spraying nobody what's up everybody we're on the roof right now uh just cleaned out these gutters right there. Got them uh, squeaky clean. That way our fluids can move the way we want them to, but there shouldn't be a lot of runoff. This isn't a, a steep roof and uh, we're gonna control how much chemical we're actually spraying. So I don't anticipate a lot of runoff, but gutters are working as designed for if there is some, 
um, just a heads up right in that corner right there and the other one there's a lot of leaves and a lot of funk built up right there I just moved it all be advised just because you're on a roof two three stories up in there there's still ants they can still get up here and they still make a lot <clears throat> they still make a lot of <clears throat> choking it ain't corona I promise uh, they make a home out of all that stuff so be careful when you're moving all these leaves on roofs if you're doing that if you're not just blowing it off if you're actually using your hands be careful uh, we've adjusted our SH I'm not shooting too hot of a mix this is a low pitch roof right here but as you can see every north side of the roof um, starting to get a little bit of organic growth so we're gonna take care of them we're about to start spraying and uh, yeah let's make that money all right y'all from here on out i'm gonna do a voiceover i'm gonna kick back and relax that way i can explain everything as you watch me do it so as you can see i'm applying my proprietary algicide from the top down which goes against what i normally do with a house wash where i apply my chemical mix from the bottom up and rinse from the top down i'm doing this because i'm not gonna rinse the roof after i'm done the whole thing with soft washing a roof is protecting the shingles and we want to prevent granule loss of these shingles. So we're just gonna apply our chemical and then we're gonna wait for the next rain to come and then wash away all that funk and all that organic growth. This organic growth is attaching to the shingles and it's eating that lime that's inside the shingles. So we're gonna apply our chemical kill the natural growth and let it release from the shingles. Next time that a rain comes, it's just gonna rinse everything away. As you can see, I'm walking down here, I'm grabbing the phone, that way I could show you guys that this surfactant slowly running down the roof. You can see I got a hat on for protection, some glasses. I use Polaroid, <laughs> polarized glasses, that way I could see better on the roof. And I also have a little uh, cloth over my face to protect me from any overspray. You can see how slow that it's moving down the roof. That's because I'm using a surfactant mixed with my sodium hypochlorite. Their surfactant's job is to stick it to the roof, to cling it to the roof. That way I can get an adequate dwell time. And the dwell time is key because you want that chemical compound to sit on the roof for long enough to where it could kill the organic growth. If it's too watered down, it's just gonna run off the roof and it's not gonna sit up there long enough for it to kill the streaks, those black streaks, which are Glio caps and magma. So you can see that I spray, I wait, and then I spray some more. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want it to run down as far as it's gonna run down where it evenly coats the shingles, and then I spray some more. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna manage how much chemical I'm spraying because this stuff's not cheap. And then Another reason why I'm doing it is because I don't want a ton of runoff. If I were to just go crazy and start spraying everywhere, I'm going to have all types of runoff hit those gutters. And when it hits the gutters, it's going to go downstream. It's going to hit the ground. It's going to hit any plants in the associated area. And then you're at a higher risk of killing some plants. And the last thing you want is, so, is a homeowner calling you because you got some dead plants. You don't want that problem. So here we go. All right, we still rolling. All right, as you can see, I've knocked out that. Knocked out that part of the roof. That part. This part. And we're still rolling. It's hot as hell up here. And I can smell this bleach today. It's definitely fuming up pretty good. Should probably have a mask on, but we're gonna be all right. Now in hindsight, that's really important what I just said right there. Although you just saw that I had a cloth on my face to protect me from the sun and some overspray, having a proper mask is going to protect you when you're on these roofs, especially in the summertime. When it's summertime and the heat, the sun is blaring on that roof and those shingles are cooking, it's going to vaporize that product that you're spraying onto the roof. And trust me, this product is dangerous. You don't want to be inhaling this stuff. Even though we got the coronavirus right now, and inhaling some sodium hypochlorite might be good for your immune system. Repeat exposure is not. And I don't want to, you know, lead you guys down the wrong path. Get a mask. That way you're properly protected. Make sure you have adequate PPE whenever you're doing these jobs. 
you can see that I'm hitting the other side of this big part of the roof and I'm doing the same thing as before. Um, ensuring that I'm not spraying too much product. I'm spraying just enough where it can slowly run down the roof. And I got my soap cranked all the way up. I'm using a great surfactant. It's from Southeast Soft Wash. It's called Southern Draw. And uh, it lives up to the name. It moves slow. And I love that because I could really manage, once again, how much product I'm spraying. And this comes in clutch whenever I'm trying to do property protection and plant protection. All right, everybody, before when I was spraying, I was spraying up a lot higher where I had to use a solid stream, a jet stream to get the fluid up to the top of the roof. Here, the roof's right in front of me. So I switched it to a fan pattern. That way I could use less product and I could really do a lot better job of managing where my chemical goes. I really love the setup I have with the, uh, the wand. I could adjust, it's a ball valve wand and I could adjust at the top of the wand if I'm shooting a solid stream or a fan like this, I could even tilt the wand like that and angle it to where I have less overspray, which is key. All right, for the remainder of the video, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit just because I hope that you guys can grasp this concept. It's not anything crazy complicated. We're not sitting here trying to solve systemic injustice. We're spraying some chemical on the roof and we're getting it squeaky clean. Since I'm using the ladder, and now you can see that I'm using a ladder, let's talk about ladder safety. All right, this is one of the biggest ways people can get hurt, not just in our industry, but a lot of industries where people work at heights. In my main job, I work at heights all the time, but I have the luxury of using a boom lift or a truck lift to work on electrical components. Here, I'm by myself and I'm using a ladder. This is really risky business, it's dangerous. If you have a helper, ensure that they're looking out for you. Ensure that they're holding the ladder. If not, I have this little mat that I like to use. It's a rubber mat I could set on the ground. Basically, it's an anti-slip mat. It holds the ladder in place. 99% of ladder injuries, if you look on YouTube and on the internet, are caused from a ladder slip out where you start ascending the ladder and the bottom, the ass end, just kicks out whenever you get up there. And that's due in part to two reasons. One, you have an insufficient grip on the ground, and two, the angle's all off. You have to have the correct angle. If the angle's off, you're setting yourself up for failure. So look into ladder safety. These are key to life items. You want to be careful and, and be protected whenever you're out there. So I'm on the roof. This is a pretty cool part of the video. I used the ladder to get on the roof where I could easily walk around. And I was at one part where I could easily walk up. When I walked up the roof, it put me in a position where I didn't have to move my ladder around to the other side of the house. I could hit different embankments of the roof from this place. So I encourage you, if you do do this, be careful because slips and trips are definitely a real thing. I don't want you guys to get hurt. But uh, also look out for the shingles. Depending on how old the house is, a lot of these shingles are delicate and they're fragile. So I don't want you walking up on the ridge line, cracking shingles, really get a good uh, feel and assess the roof and its age and its condition and make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position where you're gonna damage somebody's property. But as you can see, I'm just sitting up there at the top, I'm spraying, I'm hitting two to three different embankments on the roof from one place. I'm doing it safely, I feel very comfortable. I work at heights all the time. You, you may not feel that comfortable, so just move the ladder around. But like I said before, have a helper. All right, here we are, y'all. Home stretch. We're on the last side of the roof. This is the north side of the house. This is the side that doesn't get any sunlight, Harley, especially in the summertime when these trees fill out. So I'm using the ladder. I'm getting to the top. Once again, I'm spraying from the top of the roof, and I'm letting that sodium hypochlorite, that surfactant and that water mix just slowly creep down the roof. And when it's doing that, it's just sitting there, it's killing all the organic growth, it's doing its thing. 99% of the time when I'm cleaning a roof, I do it from the ladder. I try to avoid at all costs getting on the roof. The only reason I did it today is because I'm making a video and I'm by myself. It's hard for me to capture some good footage without a helper. 
So that's why I was walking around on the roof. But if you're by yourself, you can mitigate 99% of your injuries by just shooting from the ladder. You don't have to set foot on a dangerous surface. If you do have to walk on the roof, use a shoe like I do. It's called a extra tough they're called extra tough they're a fishing shoe and they have really tacky undersoles which help you on a roof on any wet surface what's up everybody i just wanted to personally thank you if you tuned in for the whole video i appreciate it i truly hope that i helped you if you're a newer guy i hope that you gained something from it i know a lot of you seasoned vets ain't gonna gain nothing from that i'm just uh saying something you already know but it's for the newer guys but it dawned on me hey some of you guys might not know about the equipment that I'm using to actually apply this chemical to the roof. So I'm about to break it down Barney style for y'all. That way you could understand. Now there's all types of uh, equipment that could do the same thing, but this is very simple. I'm running what's called a 12 volt soft wash system, meaning that this water pump right here, this little five and a half gallon water diaphragm pump is powered by a 12 volt battery, right? And the beauty is it's pulling from my water tanks, my SH tank, and my surfactant tank, which, let's pause real quick, time for a plug. I fill with Southern Draw. Not all the time, but I just bought some, used some today. Great surfactant, very sticky, smells amazing, smells like lemons, I think you'll like it. But the beauty is, it's pulling off those tanks through what a lot of people call a metering valve setup. Now what that allows me to do is it affords me the ability to on the fly make changes. I could adjust how strong my mix is by adjusting my SH, right? I could adjust how much soap I want. Am I on a roof with a real steep, steep uh, side of the roof where I want a hotter mix and I want more soap? I could make those changes. All I have to do is wait a minute or so for it to flow through the 200 feet of hose and that fresh mix comes out. Um, the alternative, although not as ideal, is batch mixing where you could basically use the same type pump but instead of it going through a metering system it's just pulling from a batch tank and that the the downfall to this is once you make a batch you're kind of stuck with it so at whatever potency you have you know that's what you got unless you want to make changes but then you have to do all that math in your head and i ain't with that so soft wash system the 12 volt system Working great for me, super easy to troubleshoot. I have two of them on my rig and a power washer. I do a lot of my bulk rinsing with that power washer right there. Um, either just using a high pressure ball valve or I have some shooter tips that, with different size orifices that work great for rinsing. But uh, that's my equipment. That's a day of roof washing. One of the better roofs that I've done. I got a killer roof next month that's gonna make that one look tiny. It's a big payday and I'll definitely bring, I won't do a how-to video for that, but I'll bring y'all along, which brings me to this point. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Follow me and my journey, United Soft Wash. That's my company. I say all the time on the videos, we're doing this, we're doing that. It's just me. Your boy is by himself uh, until my wife gets back from deployment. So hit that subscribe button, follow the journey. Um, hopefully you learn from me or make comments. I'm still learning. I'm new to this. I can learn from y'all too. I hope y'all have a good night. Your boy's going to get some tacos and some cervezas. Let's get it. Peace. Hello, I'm Kendra. Thanks for watching this video. Me and Kyle have a lot of work to do. See you next time. Please subscribe for more videos.